Alright fellas, if you've been watching the channel, you should already know that there are just some complete psychopaths on TikTok, right? Just complete imbeciles, if we're being honest. They just say and do the most ridiculous things. It's honestly pretty crazy to see some of this, and uh, today, it's almost like we're gonna be following a very common theme, like spirituality, conspiracies, extraterrestrial shit. That, that's basically, I would say, the theme of this one. And uh, this is actually the first one we've done in which we basically have a theme to it. The other ones have just been kind of random clips and things like this, but I think that this is one that I definitely want to tackle because there's a lot of really spiritual content on TikTok, and I don't have a problem with spirituality, right? Um, you know, there's some of it that I guess makes sense, but in reality, just especially the shit we're gonna be looking at today is just complete pseudoscience. It has no backing in reality. It's just literally stuff that is told to people to make them feel okay about things that randomly happen and occur in the world, right? Or it's just straight up lies in order to get people to click like on their TikTok and to get them on the For You page, which is essentially almost like the home feed for everybody on the app. And, uh, well, you I mean, I don't really have to explain it. We can just go ahead and just start jumping right on into it, honestly. Here are five things that are spiritual that you didn't know was spiritual. Number one, you have never seen a ghost until you've gotten his permission. Okay, that doesn't make sense because you you don't really have to get something's permission in order to see it, right? Like, I don't look at a fucking ball of, I don't know, tinfoil or something that was left over from dinner, okay? And then just be like, well, it, I have its permission to see that. And I guess the whole idea is that, well, the ghost became visible, so that's, I guess, permission. Not really. I mean, if I had the opportunity to, you know, change myself from visible to invisible, and someone just happened to see me while I was visible or whatever, that, that doesn't mean I'm giving them permission. It just means that it was circumstantial, and that, that's even if ghosts are even real. Number two, semen retention. What the fuck are you talking about? Semen retention. Number three, when you were in your mommy's tummy, you didn't have a soul yet. Yeah, because for the vast majority of the time that I was in there, I was basically a bundle of cells that was barely developed. Like, it takes months for the whole process to go along. I mean, you're, you're not just a full-fledged human from, like, the day of conception. Of course you don't have a fucking soul when you're six nerves and cells sitting in a ball. Number four, we have all died before. Yes, we have. We have went back to the spiritual realm, and then we came back. Some of us did. No, we have not. What you said just made literally no fucking sense whatsoever. I mean, like, you, you just, you're not even saying anything that makes sense to begin with. Like, it could never make sense. All death is, is simply like an absence of brain activity. Basically, no more life function. You, you're not really beating. Your heart's not beating anymore. You're not breathing. No muscular movement. Like, it's a very straightforward definition. Like, it's very easy to tell when something is dead. Just because you quote-unquote went back to the spiritual realm when you tripped on DMT doesn't mean that you've died before. Some of us didn't. Five, five, five! And your soul isn't how old you are. Your soul is a billion years old, a million years old, 2,000 years old. Your soul isn't your age. But wait, that doesn't even make sense by what you just said a minute ago. I mean, you just told me that when I was in my quote-unquote mommy's tummy, even though I'm a grown man and you can just say, you know, when, when you were a fetus and your mother, I wasn't assigned a soul. But now, my soul is two billion years old, so you're telling me they just got like a box of souls somewhere out there that they just pick from and throw it in a baby? Like, I wonder if these people legitimately think to themselves when they talk, and they're like, holy shit, is what I'm saying actually making any sense, or, or does it just all kind of come out? Okay, none of this is any evidence that you've quote-unquote met someone from a past life. These are all things that have been studied scientifically for a very long time. There is a scientific explanation behind literally everything you just detailed. And you do realize there's like billions upon billions of people on planet Earth. You're telling me that because I, you know, I talked to a guy at Subway and he tells me he's really into like Grand Theft Auto 5 and I feel like a connection, I'm like, yeah, bro, me too. Instant connection, like we're feeling good and everything there, that I knew him in a past life. Sometimes you can just look at somebody and they give off the same vibe and you're like, oh, okay, this, this guy seems like a good person. That, that doesn't mean that you've met them before in a previous life. It's just basic human instinct. Like, it's the same thing that stopped cavemen from getting killed in the wild. Okay, well, that bear over there, I get a really bad feeling about that. It has really sharp teeth. I have an instant bad connection with that. I must have met it in a past life and not just, you know, having a involuntary human survival instinct reaction so I don't get chomped up and turned into beef stew for this bear later. Like, that doesn't even make any sense. 
Okay, the supermoon apparently took place in March, that's when this video is dated. A supermoon does not mean it's quote-unquote more powerful than a regular full moon. So let's break a supermoon down scientifically here, okay? So in orbit, you know how planets and moons and all that, you know, they orbit. That's, that's how things in space work. There's a cycle called apsis, okay? Now this basically just means either of the two extreme points in like a big orbit, right? And obviously the moon orbits around the Earth. Now the orbit is pretty circular, let's be honest. If you look at it, it I mean, it's probably not a perfect circle. It, it's pretty hard to be a perfect circle in orbit, if not impossible but it has two different points one being the farthest it's going to be away from the earth in that orbit and then one point where it's going to be at its closest to the earth the farthest and the closest points away are called the perigee and the apogee okay now the perigee is when it's closest to the earth in the entire orbit the apogee is when it's at its furthest away all a supermoon is is simply when the moon peaks out at its perigee. That's really all it is. The reason that the moon looks bigger is because it's quite literally closer to the Earth. Now, in order to get a supermoon, you have to have a full moon. That's true. But there's nothing spiritual really about it. It's very easily scientifically explained. It, it doesn't make it more powerful. It, it doesn't go from fucking Super Saiyan 1 to Super Saiyan 3. It just simply means that a big ball in the sky, a big rock out there in space, is a little bit closer to our slightly bigger rock in the grand scheme of things. So... There is no evidence that you will feel a sense of clarity on the current project or creation that you're on. I mean, you can feel that at virtually any time if, you know, the conditions are met correctly, but the, there being a supermoon does not mean there's going to be one. This has nothing to do with anything. The energy of the moon does not change the entire month. There's literally nothing that it's going to fucking do in your life except maybe be a better sight to see on one specific day. Astrology is pseudoscience. Sorry to break it to people. The alignment of the stars in the sky has nothing to do with anything going on here. The whole manifesting thing is also mostly bullshit. Like, I understand, yeah, if you're, if you're in the right mentality, you can do a lot more than, you know, you could in other mentalities. And if you focus on things, I get that. But the idea that you can just think something like this into existence where the moon being closer just transforms your life is just basically coinciding any positive change in your life with a random coincidence. So you're going to notice that this whole thing here is, it's essentially pseudoscience. It's people just saying shit based on random belief. There's no historical evidence that any of it's real. There's no scientific evidence that any of it's real. It's, it's just random. Like, it's shit that anyone who passed a fourth grade science class should be able to instantaneously discredit. Guys, if you, if you want to do better at something, just put more time into it. it. It's mostly that simple. The more that you do something, the better you usually get at it. You don't have to wait until the fucking moon is closer in the sky. You don't have to, I don't know, put plastic straws in yours and go outside and dance in the rain and hope that you get struck by lightning. If you want something to happen in your life, you have to be the positive change that actually makes shit happen. If you want to make more money, you have to find a way to make more money. You got to get a new job. You got to get a side hustle, something. If you want to do better in school, study more. Don't wait until the fucking moon is just a little bit bigger in the sky and then go outside and, and think that that's just going to radically change your life. It will not. And people who are telling you that that kind of stuff will change your life are simply deluding you in order to make you feel better. Better. Well, if you're into aliens and like conspiracy theories, sit the fuck down. Okay, I love conspiracy theories and I love aliens. Let's go ahead and sit down. Okay, I tell everyone the story because one, it's super cool and two, I'm pretty sure it's 100% true. The statement, I'm pretty sure it's 100% true, gives me zero hope that anything you're about to say is going to either make sense or be true. So one of my mom's closest friends was in the Navy in the 80s. And keep in mind, during the 80s, the US and Russia were at heat a moment, but when are they not? And it was also the Cold War. Okay, so yeah, the Cold War. The US and the Soviet Union, yeah, definitely were in a little bit of a global showdown. It, it lasted a lot longer than the 80s before that, and even a little bit after that. But yeah, you're spot on so far. So during that time, my mom's friend was monitoring Russian weaponry, and he was also like on ships, submarines, yada yada yada. Okay, so we're trying to provide credibility, that's fine. One day, a few higher ranks of the Navy take him to this dark room. Keep in mind who's with like a few other people in his rank. Okay, so a bunch of higher ranks in the Navy come to him and someone else who are at the same rank but below these people and they take him into a dark room. Something about this sounds already bullshit. I'm sure we're gonna figure out very soon. Two men in fucking black waltz on in and they're like, hey babies, I'm gonna hand you these two files each, okay? Okay. And they're like, mm. In those files, it states that there is actual evidence of extraterrestrial. 
extra fucking terrestrial. Okay, so what you're telling me is that your mom's friend, who was a lower rank than the higher ranking Navy officials who took them into this room, were giving, uh, I, I don't know, they were apparently giving off the impression that they were trustable enough to be given what I would assume to be classified top secret heavy security material by the men in black, even though they probably didn't have clearance to have access to that material. They probably weren't at a rank to be trusted with that if they were just, you know, sitting on a goddamn ship monitoring weaponry and not doing some like the, you know, a high brow, high brass stuff like those other high-ranking officials would have been doing. And this sounds realistic to you. Yes, there is actual evidence of extraterrestrial. So I'm gonna go ahead and teach you guys a little bit about this. Well, it's not necessarily evidence, quote unquote, but I mean, it's like a scientific paradox that in reality makes way too much sense. And it, I guess, really breaks down the entire thing. There's something called the Fermi paradox, which is named after an Italian American physicist named Enrico Fermi. Essentially this paradox, just all it really does is tell you that there's a huge contradiction between how much evidence we lack scientifically of extraterrestrial civilization civilizations, while at the same time stating that there's such a stupidly high probability for them to exist. There's another thing out there called the Drake Equation, which all it really does is, well, it's a formula to try and estimate how many, like, galactic civilizations that there are out there, kind of like us. I mean, we're not a galactic civilization or anything, we're planetary, but it tries to figure out how many civilizations are maybe in the Milky Way galaxy. That's the very basic gist of it. But the paper basically says there's billions of stars in the Milky Way, similar to the sun. Of course, there's way more galaxies galaxies out there. With high probability, there has to be other Earth-like planets out there, and we've already got pictures of those and discovered those. And if our planet is typical, then some must have already developed intelligent life by this point if we've been able to do it. It basically states that some of those civilizations, if they do exist, may have even developed like interstellar travel where they can go like between stars and galaxies even. And since there's so many stars that are like the sun that are actually older than the sun, that provides even more time than our life has had to develop. So so there is somewhat evidence of extraterrestrials. UFOs observing us from underwater. Where underwater? Hmm. Ant fucking Arctica. All right, I'm about to completely myth bust this one, okay? Th this is gonna be fun. I like doing this one because people, you know, there's a lot of conspiracies about Antarctica because there's so little human activity on such a vast scale. I mean, it's a fucking giant continent, right? But there's not that much human activity there because the conditions are so harsh. There's no way that UFOs were underwater monitoring us from under Antarctica because Antarctica is a continent. I feel like people have this misconception that Antarctica is literally just a big ice sheet just floating on the water. That's not the case. Antarctica is a legitimate continent. It is a landmass that is covered in ice. It's pretty much like all the other continents. You wouldn't say, oh, there's aliens underneath Asia. They're in the water underneath Asia. No, because it's a continent. It's a landmass. Landmasses don't float. They're connected to the earth, okay? We don't live on a bunch of big dirt lily pads. Why does everything weird happen in Antarctica, hmm? It's very interesting. Once again, because of the lack of human activity there, it's a very good place to start conspiracy theories. No, it's actually not interesting at all. You've been lied to. Folks, there's a very high probability that we're not alone. There's probably aliens out there somewhere. There's probably big civilization. There's probably, they probably got, you know, the Star Wars shit going on out there somewhere. We don't know. We don't know yet, but it's, it's probable, you know? But don't let some 15 year old sassy girl on TikTok who talks like an idiot try and lie to you. They, her mom's friend did not have this situation happen to him. It was a lie made up to look more interesting. He probably wanted to beat, if we're being honest. I mean, that's something that men do. Let's, let's keep it a buck here, men. Sometimes you gotta lie a little bit to try and get in. I understand, but this was not true. None of the shit that you've seen in this video is true. I heavily suggest people start actually reading scientific shit instead of just like watching a TikTok and be like, okay, well, her, her mom's friend saw alien documents or everyone's gone to the spirit realm and died and then come, well, some have come back. These people are crazy or they're just lying to get clicks one or the other. With that being said, thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're brand new around here on the channel. Follow me over on Twitter and Twitch at sub to Optimus. Make sure to check out Shop Opti down below. Thank you to my channel members. Your support helps my channel tremendously. And until my next video, guys, this is Optimus actually being interested in science and signing out.